nothing is selling in the city of Denver. At least that's what people think. This is a text message I received earlier today, and this seems to be a pretty common sentiment out here, and not just for the Denver metro area, but all across the nation. And I figured it was pretty important to really dig into to find out what's going on. Are they right? Is this, you know, a fallacy? Am I just too close to it to understand exactly what's going on? Well, we're going to jump into it, and it is the end of 2023, the beginning of 2024 here, it's January, and you know what that means. It means we're going to go over what happened in the Denver real estate market in December and over the entire year of 2023, which was wild to say the least. And if you're new here, welcome. My name's Alex Saldana. I've been a local real estate agent since 2010. I love to answer your questions. So if you have a question about the real estate market or city here, drop it in the comments below. I'd be happy to answer it for you. And we're going to dig into that question on everybody's mind. And that is, is anything selling out there? If you've been following me for a while, you know that I'm a numbers driven person. It's what makes all the decisions for me because I know headlines are out there just to sell people, to get clicks, to get attention. But what are the numbers saying? And as always, I want to start with the closed price. That's what everybody wants to know anyways, right? Are we going up in price, down in price? But these are the median prices. So every neighborhood is different. I've looked at plenty of neighborhoods recently. They're still down 5 to 10% from a little bit over a year ago. And I've seen other neighborhoods that are up five to 10% at the same time. So today, as of the end of December, 2023, our median close price is 535,000. That's down 15,000 from a month ago. Totally normal in this cycle to have a drop in median sales price. Now, what was it a year ago? Well, if we go back and look, we were at $532,500. So virtually flat year over year, very interesting. New listings, how much is coming up out of the market? If you've been tracking the market, you know that inventory is driving everything right now along with interest rates. People aren't putting their home up on the market because they're locked in at under 3% interest rates and they can't stomach getting 6.5%, which is what they are today. So in December, we had 2,800 new listings hit the market. Now we're looking at three years here of history. Last year, we had 2,800 hit the market. So virtually same year over year. Usually this is the bottom. I'll be interested to see if we get less new listings in January versus December. So cyclically, if we go back about 15 years, uh, we can see that, you know, it's not too abnormal. Yes, it's less than the norm, but it's not a crazy number as far as new listings are concerned, but that's holding prices stable. Now, supply and demand. How many listings are on the market? Look at this drop-off. In November, we had 13,500 active listings on the market. In December, we had 9,100. I think that's going to be a combination of a couple of things, actually, between homes that are actually selling and properties that have gone expired towards the end of the year, right? You write a listing agreement in September or October. Hey, I'll give you a few months to sell my house, which a lot of agents do. And if it doesn't sell, we're just going to make it go expired. And to look up, actually, how many went expired in the last 30 days, holy cow, 2,800 listings went expired in the month of December. That is is wild because we're going to look at something else here and i think the next one is going to be closed listings the amount of closed listings was 4100 in december so the amount that went expired is almost the same as how many actually sold that is quite a number so we skipped one here pending listings uh you know 3800 for the month 3900 for the month Pretty standard, a little bit lower than, you know, a couple years ago, but still higher than where we were last year. Now, to go back to the closed listings, we were at 4,100 versus 4,300 in November. So not many less closed in December than November compared to last year. December, we had 4,300 closed. This year, 4,100. Not a notable difference whatsoever. Pretty much the same. Now... Days in MLS skyrockets as it always does. And we were at 32 days on the market today versus last month at 25 days on the market. This is what happens every single year. Get rid of the COVID years because nothing's normal here. We pull back and we see back in 2017, 17 days on the market, 17 days. And then before that is when it was much, much higher. So we're just balancing a little bit 
with a lot less inventory on the market. Now, month supply, this is what's interesting, is that month supply of inventory is down to 1.7 months versus 2.6. So if today there were no new listings to hit the market, it would take approximately, what, six to seven weeks to sell out of all of that inventory. And then the amount of showings right now to go under contract is 11 showings per listing. And how many showings per month is 4.7. So showing activity is down, closed volume is down, which is the norm. But really, it's nothing crazy out there that anybody should be losing their minds over. Now, to address this question on is anything selling in the Denver market cap, we're going to just look at this real easily. We're going to look at how many active listings there are, okay? So there's 9,100 active listings in the market as of the end of December, okay? As far as closed listings, we sold 4,100 properties in the month of December. That's not quite 50%, but almost half of the homes that were on the market sold. So what's going on out there? Why does everybody feel like nothing is selling? Well, I think it has to come down to expectations, right? No one is in control of the market. No one's in control of the buyers or the sellers. A lot of people are being sold a bill of goods that their houses may be worth more than it is or that it'll sell quicker than it is. But right now, I would be telling people, hey, it might take us 60 to 90 days to get your house sold at a decent price. Yes, we can drop the price, but you know what? You don't have a whole lot of competition. So it comes down to how many buyers are in the market for your particular house in your particular area. And you got to look at what that competition is like. And if it's not a lot of it, and as long as you're priced within what the neighborhood will support, then you might just have to hang tight. Two, four, six weeks may not get it done in this market. Some are selling that fast, but not too many. So how are we stacking up to the rest of the country? Well, to look at the important numbers here, again, looking at active listings, we're looking at the previous three years of data. And we can see in 2023, we had approximately 818,000 active properties in the entire U.S., at the end of 2023, okay? So each of these numbers is a one-week timestamp. So we can see we sold 61,500 the last week of December, 57,000 the week before, 58,000 the week before, 57, 56,000 the week before that. So approximately, what, a little over 200,000, 225,000 based off of how many active listings at 817,000. So we sold, you know, 25% or more of all active properties on the market in the entire country. And then my fun number that I love to look at all the time is price drops. I want to see how crazy people are getting. And we can actually see here this. Oh my gosh. If you watch the last video, you will see that our price drops were way less than what 2022 had. And that was, you know, back in this zone. And I was going, okay, actually, I don't think we're going to be as aggressively price dropping at the end of 2023 as we did at the end of 2022. But man, we just took the cake and we spiked above last year's price drops on how many homes are active on the market that had a price drop. And according to this number, 5% more homes than last year have a price drop on them. And then the age of inventory is still less than what it is. Uh, in 2022, so 65 days as the average age of a house on the market, and month supply is virtually the same as last year. And then here's the number no one thought we were going to get to. Everyone thought we were crashing and burning. Everyone's going to die. The sky is falling. Yet, nationally, we are up 4% year over year from 2022. Medium close price, the end of 2022 was 349,000. The end of 2023, 364,000. I can't make this stuff up, folks. I'm not that entertaining, and it is writing a better narrative than I could ever come up with. And if you want my prediction on what's going to happen in the year 2024, knowing that there's a good 50% chance that I will be wrong, and I hope that is better than most people out there uh, because I try not to speculate too much, you know, Rates have dropped about one to one and a quarter points in the last six to eight weeks, meaning homes are 10% cheaper than they were a couple of months ago. And I think this spring, March, April, into the beginning of May, I think we're going to have multiple offer price scenarios again. I think it's going to be a strong season to sell. I don't know what the Fed's going to do with interest rates come March, but we'll see. Even if they keep them flat, 
I think that'll still be great for the housing market out there. I think there's a ton of pent up demand for people that haven't done anything for the last couple of years that have outgrown their house or have moved. And it's just, they're starting to crack and cave and getting rid of those 3% interest rates and finally starting to sell because their house no longer fits what they're looking for. And if you want to see why homes are 10% cheaper today than they were a couple months ago, check this video out. You're going to want to watch it.